Investigative reporting and uh, science really share a common, important common fundamental, and that is that the best of them, the best of science reporting, actually the best of science and the best of investigative reporting is evidence-based. Um, and uh, it's in, by evidence-based, I mean, you know, we rely on independent, methodical um, fact-finding to determine what's really going on and why. I think there is also a lot of value in being able to explain science to a general audience and to explain complex science issues to a general audience. And sometimes science itself um, is a subject of investigative reporting. Um, as with any field, um, there are abuses, um, and um, having a science background allows us to do a better, be a better watchdog. While I sort of had an idea of the subject matter and some of the possible lines of inquiry and, and where we could look, it really takes someone who has done one investigative story after another. So I basically got to take this two-year master class in investigative reporting. There are not enough um, journalists who understand science, and in fact, a lot of journalists are afraid of it. Uh, and to be able to tackle a project like this with somebody who not only wasn't afraid of it, but had a degree in science, um, allowed us to do um, a lot of things that we wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. There were questions sometimes when we were looking at specific cases or, um, you know, maybe how the CDC tracked its numbers of what fell under antibiotic resistance and what didn't. There. And one of the things we discovered very quickly is that nobody's keeping count. And so then it became a question of both a science question and a law question. Um, we discovered that uh, privacy laws and public health laws actually required keeping um, antibiotic resistant outbreaks secret. A surprising finding, I think. try to pair up with someone who has done many, many stories and can guide you because uh, I don't know that it's possible for your first project to, to do it on your own. And I think most importantly is to just be patient. Um, it's not gonna happen overnight. It can take way longer than anything else you've done. I would say my top tip uh, for doing investigations uh, that involve scientific issues is if you don't have a science degree, pair up with somebody who does. Uh, I guess another of my top tips is, uh, would be to you know, formulate an investigative question. Um, in the Uncounted that Yasmin and I worked on, um, in that case we started out with what we thought was a very simple question, which is how many people are dying of antibiotic resistant infections? And to our surprise, we discovered that no one was keeping track. And so then the story became, um, went in two directions, became, you know, brought up new questions. Why is it? Why is it we're not keeping track? And, you know, what clues can we find that'll tell us how many people are dying of it and where and when? One other tip that I think is really important, uh, you know, I said, ask the investigative question, but also uh, question everything and everyone. Um, there's an old journalism saying, if you're, Mother says she loves you, check it out. And uh, I think it's important to question everyone, especially the trusted sources. One of the stories ended up being about outbreaks that are kept secret from the public. And I don't think that's anything that was on our radar when we started. Um, it happened because Deb was investigating one of um, the cases that we were going to lead with in the first story and she found in the report and in Virginia state law that uh, by law the outbreaks were not reported to the public and I think that was a big surprising finding that let us down several more months of reporting. It was the CDC's statistics. The CDC um, was widely quoted their statistics on how many people died of antibiotic resistant infections and it made it seem as if they had a handle on the problem. They said that 23,000 people died a year of antibiotic resistant infections and 
they were not presented with a caveat or, or anything like that. And then when we dug deeper into the numbers, we realized they were based on very flimsy data and outdated data and, you know, sort of questionable statistical methods. And that led to, you know, the next question, which is why is it that they don't have reliable statistics? And the answer lay in the failure on the local level, state level, and the federal level to actually gather that information.